Help me, I'll run you in, every one of you. Come back here, turn this off. Hey, uh, you young hooligan. Yeah, I'll pin your ears back. I didn't do that. I didn't call you no flat flat as Flanagan. Mr. Flanagan. Mr. Flanagan, I wouldn't say anything like that. It ain't the feet that's flat. <laughs> that's enough out of you. It's time people like you learn respect for private property. If you have none for the fire laws. Will you stop stinking up this room? Full of smoke in here till a body can't breathe. Give me that or I'll break your scrawny neck. Scrawny, is it? Busted drain on your floor, dearie. Oh, my mistake. Maybe that ain't it. It's burning. The house is burning. Oh, it's burning. The window. Jump out the window. Call oh, that fire engine, Mac. We've got to get home to Ethel. But we can always go home. This is a fire. Pretty badly smashed up. Get an ambulance. It'll be back in a minute. In a few minutes, he'll be dead. Well, don't be upsetting yourself, miss. He'll ride easier in the ambulance. Get a car. Any... Here's a car. Please, bring it. My brother's been hurt. Please let me use your car. The ambulance isn't here. He's not here. Use the car. Come on, the back seat. That's a lame one. There you are. Get in here. Hold the hold on your lap. Fine. Hurry up, sir. Okay, so 
I wish I could stop seeing them. Yes, the ones lying on the sidewalk. One was tiny, just a baby. Schumacher's baby, probably. They live on the third floor. Yes, the third floor. The mother threw it out the window, somebody said. Whoever's responsible is a murderer. Well, she's dead, too. She threw it out and then jumped. No, I mean the owner of the house. You don't know what it was like inside. No wonder it went up like an explosion, like it was soaked in gasoline. Everywhere the wood was dried out and rotten. There was a hole in the middle of the stairs, halfway up to the third floor, where my foot went through. What chance did anybody have to get out? To get to a fire escape? If they did, what good was it? Yeah, it looked to me as if that ladder was loose. And that's why your brother fell. Joey dies, it's the owner's fault. Well, not going to die, and I don't say, don't even let yourself think of it. Why couldn't he fix that fire escape? Why couldn't he fix anything unless he had to? To make more money. Isn't that murder? Shouldn't a man like that be in jail? Or worse. How is he? Is he going to die? Only a preliminary examination, of course. Is Joey but, going uh, to die? Oh, Doctor, this is the boy's sister. Oh, how do you do? We feel there is no immediate danger. But he isn't going to die. He isn't going to die. Whether he'll be able to walk again is another matter. Doctor, is there any chance that you'll, you'll have to amputate? No. No, don't let them. You won't, will you? They won't unless they have to. Doctor, you've got to do everything you can to save that boy's leg. Now, don't think about the expenses. These people are friends of mine. I be sure, Mr. Cortland, we will do everything possible. Expense? I thought it was free. You said they took patients free. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You see, I thought that you, you wouldn't let me bring him here, and although this was the best place for him. Now, please don't worry about the money. You let me take care of that. But you mustn't. You can't. But, well, you can pay me back if you insist. I can't pay you back. We're poor. I'm, I'm just a sales girl. My father's on relief. Well, the more reason to let me do this. But it might cost a lot, an awful lot. That doesn't matter. You see, I have lots more than I know what to do with, and, and uh, well, what's money for if it isn't to spend? You don't even know me, a Joey. Yeah, I feel as if I knew you. A lot more than I know most people, actually. Of course, if you want to be conventional, why, permit me to introduce myself. My, my boyhood companion, my esteemed friend. In fact, I can almost vouch for him as if he were my own brother. <laughs> You're not a bit like a rich man. No. Not like the one Sam's always talking about. Sam? Who's Sam? <laughs> oh, he's just a friend of mine. Oh, he doesn't like rich people, huh? Well, he's sort of left, if you know oh, what I mean. Yeah. Well, how do you feel? That's how I feel. Behind my back. Children, it's time for recess. Well, I, I, I'm afraid I have to go now. Goodbye. Good luck to Joy. I, I haven't really thanked you. Oh, please, please don't. It, it couldn't be half as nice as what you just did. Would you like to see your brother now, just for a minute? Oh, uh, yes, thank you. The guy must have dough. I thought there was an army job or something. Yes. When as usual, Peter. Please. Mm. There. 
Thank you. Pardon me, sir. Mr. Mather is calling. Mather? Well, what on earth brings him out here? Well, perhaps the poor thing has no other place to go. I can understand why. Well, ask him to come in, Jean. Uh, yes, sir. That's funny. He didn't seem to have anything on his mind when he met us at the boat. Oh, to be rotten rich and have important things come up. Of course, that does sound a little gastronomic. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mather, sir. Forgive this intrusion. That's quite all right. Ethel, my dear. Lovely as always. Arthur, it's nice to see you. Not business, I hope. Have the newspapers been after you yet? Newspapers? No. What? Good. I was afraid I'd have to stop on my way off to telephone. Well, what? What's up? Oh, good evening. Good evening. Everything serious. While you've been abroad, Peter, the newspapers have been in an uproar. There have been several serious tenement fires on the east side. The fatalities have been really shocking. The papers, the district attorney, the police, the public, all looking for someone to blame, a scapegoat. And this afternoon there was another tenement fire, the worst of the lot. Yes, I know, Don, and I saw the whole thing. Five dead. Nothing could be more unfortunate at this time. At any time, I'd say. I mean for us. It was one of the Cortland tenements. Cortland? I expected it. Our luck couldn't hold. Are you sure? That whole block of tenements belongs to you. Peter! So I'm the landlord of that fire trap. That's no reason to burn your own house down. Only a couple of hours ago, I agreed that the owner of that place was a murderer. Agreed with whom? Snow White. That he ought to be in the penitentiary, or worse. Well, it's not quite as serious as that. Of course, we must be prepared for a good deal of unpleasant newspaper clamor. The district attorney will make as much publicity out of it as possible. But if the matter is handled properly, the hue and cry will blow over in a week. Yeah. I suppose it will blow over. Or perhaps it shouldn't. Really, Peter? Oh, you'd feel the same way if you'd seen what Don and I saw. A woman had to throw her baby out of the third floor window. Then she jumped. Oh, it was horrible. Oh, pardon me, sir. There's a newspaper on the telephone asking to speak to you, sir. Do they know Mr. Cortland's here? I didn't say, sir. I'll talk to them. Very good, sir. Switch the call in here, John. Uh, yes, sir. I'll just say you don't care to make any statement until you have further details. Tomorrow, I'll issue one in town, if necessary. What, in my name, without my knowing what's in it? We only express your sympathy for the victims and offer your full cooperation to the authorities. Quite simple. No reason to trouble you. Besides, you can always read the papers and see what you said. Leave it all to me, Peter, please. Just refer the newspapers to me, as your father always did. Hello. Yes, yes, this is Peter Cortland. Let me handle it. Yes, I know. We, we saw the whole thing. It was ghastly. Be careful. You don't know how they twist what you say. What? The district attorney? Of when? Oh, at what time on Wednesday? Or where will the investigation be held? Give it to me, Peter, please. Oh, of course I'll be there. Nothing of the kind. No, I'll give you my word. No, not at all. Good night. Good old Don Quixote. Now you told the newspapers you'll go, I'm afraid you'll have to. We'll all go. It'll be fun. Yes. Peter can make a speech and I'll heckle. And I'll vamp the district attorney. This isn't anything to clown about. We who got slapped. I respect your impulse, Peter. But I'm sorry you didn't feel you could leave it all to me, as your father would have. However, if you promise to control yourself, let me do the talking. Five people have been killed, burned to death. I don't know who's responsible. But I'm not going to dodge whatever's coming my way. Here, here. here. Peter Cortland for president. Be good enough to find seats, gentlemen. We're just about to start. Oh, who's the guy? He's the one I told you about. Oh, the kindly capitalist? Chasing after you already, huh? No, he isn't. He's probably here. Uh, quiet, please. I must ask all those present to preserve the same order as if this were a court of law. I will examine Mr. Rosen first. Mr. Rosen. Mr. Rosen. Is Mr. Rosen here? He wants you. Me? Here, please. Sit down. Your name is on this list as one of the people living in the house. Just tell us in your own words all you know about the fire. Fire? Certainly, the tenement fire where you live. What's the matter with you? Don't you know about the fire? I know. Then perhaps you'll be kind enough to tell us about it. I tell them my wife isn't there. My babies. Burning up and that they wouldn't let, let me in. So they're burning in their beds. 
my babies, my, my little babies. I didn't know. I'm sorry. But uh, can you tell us how the fire started? St started what? You're excused. Inspector Castle. That's all. You can go now. Go? Where? Why, wherever you want to. Home. Home? Yes. Sure. Home. Inspector, did the fire department make an examination of the premises after the fire? Yes, sir. I did it myself, sir. Did you find any evidence of how the fire started? I did not, sir. My guess is that it started in the basement, probably in a pile of rubbish. Isn't rubbish in the basement a violation of the law? I couldn't answer that, sir. It's outside my department. Whose department is it? The tenement house department, I should think, sir. How could the flames have spread so quickly that they shut off the escape of so many tenants? Those old law tenements always go up like match ends. Wooden wainscoting burns like somebody ran along it with a torch. Wooden wainscoting? Isn't that a violation of the law? You'll have to ask the building department. All right, Inspector. That's all. Is the building department represented here? Yes, sir. Just step up here, Inspector. There's nothing to worry about. All we have to do is sit tight. So I see. Inspector, can you tell us if wooden wainscoting is against the law? Not in that building it wasn't. That's an old law tenement. What's that mean? Any tenement put up before the law of 1901. Usually when the legislator makes new laws about tenements, it excludes all those already in existence. You mean to say all tenements erected before 1901 don't have to use fire retarding materials in the hallways? That's right. But aren't those old buildings the very ones that need it most? Well, aren't they? I can't properly answer that. Why not? It isn't really in my department. What department this time? The tenement house department, I suppose. Inspector Waller, you're next. Capitalist democracy. Why doesn't he call the landlord? It isn't the one guy, it's the system. You're in the uh, tenement department? Tenement house department, yes, sir. According to your records, when did your department last inspect the tenement house in question? Our records don't show any inspection at that address at any time. Never? Never, sir. But why? How can that be? Evidently, there's never been any complaint against that house. You never inspect a tenement for violations until there's been a complaint? We have 224 inspectors to cover 105,000 tenements and apartment houses. It would take our entire staff three years to visit each one of these houses once. I see. Uh, Mr. Inspector, in the light of your years of experience in the department, would you consider this building a fire trap? Well, if that building's a fire trap, then so is every old law tenement in New York City. And there are 67,000 of them. That will be all, gentlemen. Thank you. My uh, report will state that a fire of uh, undetermined origin broke out in the basement of the house in question. According to your testimony, there were no violations and all the laws were scrupulously upheld. Well, that's all there is to it. Let's go. Aren't you going to call the landlord? What was that? What about the owner? Why doesn't he have to testify? I'm not empowered by the law to question the owner unless there's been some evidence of violation. You heard? There's no such evidence. What about the fire escape? Yeah, yeah. what about that? There's been no evidence about any fire escape. It was broken. Why wasn't it ever fixed? Peter, come, please. As I've explained, that's impossible. Why, if he's here, the paper said he'd be here today. I am here, Mr. District Attorney. I'll answer any questions I can. Don't be a fool, Peter. Thank you, Mr. Cortman. Sir Why didn't you tell me who he was? How was I to know? Did you say it was in the paper? Not his picture. Well, what's happened to the press? I'll telephone him. They'll be back. Go right ahead. I'm still here. Of course, you understand that uh, legally, I mean, there's no obligation on your part to answer any question which might in any way embarrass... Oh, please ask any question you like. Why, uh, well, as a matter of fact, I don't know just where... What about the fire escape? Just a minute, please. I'm conducting this investigation. Whitewashing, you mean? Who said that? I did. And who are you? Her brother was hurt falling off a broken fire escape. He may never be able to walk again. 
She ought to have the right to ask questions, if you can't think of any. <clears throat> of course, if you've no objections, Mr. Cortland, we want to get to the truth of the matter. No, I don't mind who asked the question. You were at the fire. You saw the fire escape. It was broken, wasn't it? Yeah, it appeared to be. Who would you say was responsible for that? Well, wouldn't that depend upon how it was broken? Oh. You mean not the owner. He only failed to fix it. Of course, he has no responsibility. Well, how could he fix it if he didn't know about it? Uh, Mr. Mather, Mr. Mather, my uh, business manager, tells me that there was no report from any of the tenants that there was anything the matter with the fire escape. So it was the tenants' fault because they failed to report it. Why should they? They knew it wouldn't be fixed any more than anything else ever was. That's not fair. I protest. Excuse me, Mr. District Attorney. I'm Arthur Mather, Mr. Cortland's business manager. I'm in a better position than he is to answer slurs of that nature. We have consistently made every reasonable repair to that house. How can you reasonably repair it? It's falling to pieces. Every board in the place is rotten. The filth and cockroaches come up through the cracks. Work all day, you can't get anything clean. It's an old house, yes. That's why you pay low rents. There isn't any rent low enough for a place like that. Would you expect to live there for nothing? People shouldn't have to live in places like that even for nothing. You ought to be made to build decent places. Come, come, none of that. This isn't a forum for radicals. I'll permit no stump speeches here. I don't think we need to take her too literally. She seems a very intelligent young lady. Seriously, now. What do you suggest? Mr. Cortland is losing money right now on every tenement he owns. Well, what do you want him to do? Close them up? Throw all you people out on the street? Why can't he put up decent buildings fit for human beings? If you understood cost sheets, I could show you why. If he rebuilt those tenements today, he'd have to charge you $25 a room a month instead of the 10 you're paying now, and still he wouldn't get his money back. All right, I only have one more question to ask. Mr. Cortland, didn't you yourself say to me the night of the fire that the owner of that house ought to be in the penitentiary? Not precisely. What? You said that. I said, or worse. Oh. Why did you say it if you didn't mean it? I did mean it, on the basis of what I knew then. You didn't know you were the owner, is that it? That, amongst other things. You expect me to believe that? I don't know what to expect from you. That happens to be the truth. Of course, you wouldn't think that you belonged in jail, or worse. Well, frankly, no, because I didn't know the surrounding circumstances. Doesn't that make it even worse? That you didn't know or care under what conditions human beings were living on your property? Breeding, that's very important to you, isn't it, Mr. Cortland? You're pretty proud of your own breeding. You come from one of our oldest and finest families, but your blousy tenements breed criminals and sick people, and you don't know what kind of women. That's where some of your rent comes from, Mr. Cortland, from women like that. If you don't believe me, come down and see for yourself. Stop off sometime on your way to your yacht in the East River. Use your eyes and your ears, and especially your nose, Mr. Cortland. Maybe then you'll think like you did the other night. The owners of houses like that ought to be in the penitentiary, or worse. Right, that's right. Quiet, please. Quiet down. Get your paper, big society scandal. Park and your society scandal. Get your paper, read all about it. America's great fortunes, accused of operating disreputable houses. Painful condition when the poor Magdalens of Grand Street are exploited by one of our oldest and most reputable families. This gentleman owns the building. I know, but I'm still asking. What are you after? Do you, uh, you live here? No. But Mary Rogers does, and you know it. Don't think you can come snooping around her just because you got dough. Now, look here. Who do you think you are? Hey, Sam. You must be Sam. How do you know? Well, Miss Rogers, that is, she told me that she had a friend who was kind of left. So what? I'm glad to know you. 
Well, I'm not. Give my regards to Miss Rogers, huh? Say, now don't worry about us, my friend. We'll manage somehow. Take it away, you're on your own. Oh, well, I, uh, well, th that is, you see, we're here to... Oh, she might guess that. Well, this is Mr. Cortland, the owner of the building. I pay my rent regular. Well, we'll try to overlook that. Now, Mr. Cortland's making a survey, a list of his tenants by occupations, you understand? Oh, I ask you if you have any occupation. Well, any little occupation will do. I have. Day work? Night work. What's it to you? Scrubbing out offices for fools like you. You're the owner. Why don't you fix this place up so it's fit to live in? The plaster's falling down. The stairs ain't safe. The drain's busted. There's roaches and bed bugs and fleas. Well, I guess she doesn't like us. Well, we don't seem to be doing so well. You're certainly mother's little helper. Do you notice a certain olfactory assault? An odor? In fact, a stink? That's what Ethel calls the poverty smell. I noticed everyone down here has the same look. Obviously, it's asphyxiation. Right, we'll try one more. Huh? Hello, boys. I'm the owner of this building. Well, I don't care. I want you to get out. I want you to vacate this apartment as soon as possible. Oh. Remodeling, you understand. Apartment. Apartment. This two by two hole. Why well, ain't fit for nothing? Not even rats. Well, then you won't mind leaving it. Oh, I guess I ain't good enough for it, is that it? Ha! This fly speck tumble down old hole. So you're kicking me out, huh? I thought you were a couple of gentlemen. Why, you! You! Nobody's kicking you out, Myrtle. Well, funny, it looks just like someone we've met before somewhere. Gagman, huh? I'm sorry, I, I don't want to be unfair. I'm willing to give you a reasonable time, a few days, but you must be out by the end of the week. Forget it, Myrtle, you're not going anywhere. If she was a chorus girl out of a nightclub, you'd be offering her plenty. Because you don't want her, you'd run her out when she ain't got any place to go but the gutter. She can't live in your house, no, it's too respectable for her in this hole. Are you by any chance this lady's protector? No, not what you mean. Well, perhaps I'd better call a policeman. Since when did guys like you get so moral you have to pick on her? Did I ask you to butt in, you soapbox sap? I can take care of myself. You know, you're not kidding anybody. I know the real reason you came snooping around here. You're after Mary Rogers. Well, keep away from it, you hear? Just because you inherited a lot of dough you never could have earned, you think you can come down here in the slums and take anything you want? You're mistaken. I have no interest in Mary Rogers. And furthermore, I happen to own this house, and you don't live here. If anyone doesn't belong here, it's you. I'd suggest that you leave before I have to put you out. I got a good mind to paste you. <laughs> <laughs> Evidently, you're not as intelligent as you look. Sam, what happened? We had a row. I socked him. He fell through the railing. I hope he isn't serious. He is. It's his own fault. The railing was rotten. Oh, he's all right. Boy, is that a relief. Hey, you had me scared. What goes on here? That's the man. And this is Mr. Cortland. Well, what's the trouble, Mr. Cortland? Oh, nothing. Nothing. My, my, my friend shouldn't have bothered you. Blood? That guy get tough with you? Oh, no. No, I fell through the railing and down these stairs. I'm, I'm all right. I don't want to bring charges against anybody. Go ahead and tell him, why don't you? Think I want any of your charity? I socked him. That's what knocked him through the railing. Go ahead, arrest me. Assault and battery. Make it attempted murder. I'm nobody. He's Peter Cortland, the Cortland. Go on, copper. Why don't you do your stuff? All right, you ask for it. Well, let him go, please. He can't give me none of that. Let him go. I prefer to handle this in my own way. Well, watch yourself, hard guy. His master's voice, huh? Sam, please. Keep your lip buttoned. He belongs in jail. I wouldn't give him that satisfaction.
Why couldn't you have a little guy for a landlord? He does a decent thing. He comes down here to see for himself what conditions are like. To boot Myrtle out into the street, you mean? I don't believe that. Well, it was either that or he was on the hunt for you. After this, do you think he's going to go on paying Joey's hospital bills? The doctor said Joey ought to stay for at least another month. If Cortland will stand for what you call him in the DA's office, he'll take anything. That's different. I only told him the truth. Besides, I'm going to pay him back every cent. <laughs> Who are you kidding? Nickels and dimes won't add up to his food bill. Admit it, he expects to get paid off some other way. That's a lie. Okay, okay. So I poked him so you can still pay him back. Maybe he won't let Joey stay now. If he's that kind of a guy, the quicker you know it, the better. Joey ought to stay in the hospital. He still needs treatment. If you'd only apologize... Apologize? After his giving me this? Here, I need that for supper. <laughs> I wish you could only see yourself. Where'd you get that? I thought Joey might like him as a coming home present. His eyes just like yours was. Yeah, that's why I got him. Oh, Joey. He'll be coming home from the hospital in a few minutes. So quick? Is he okay? On crutches. He'll always be late. On the up and up? Hey, you guys, come here. What's up? Hey, what do you know? Joey's late on the print for good. He's coming home with crutches. How do you like that? Hey, hey, Joey. Hey, 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 Joey. Hey, scram, you kid. Don't let those kids get you down. Yeah, I know. All kids are like that. True. What's the matter then? The doc said it was okay to bring him home, didn't he? He said it probably wouldn't do any harm. Well, then what are you worrying about? Sam, when I told Joey last night he was coming home, he turned white as a sheep. He said he didn't want to come home. Into that house ever again. Well, kid, no wonder. But he'll get over that. Sam, I'm scared. Not about his leg, but for him. He's just a baby. Last night, he, he looked like a crazy old man. Forget it. Do you suppose if I went to Cortland, I'd, I'd apologize. I'd do anything in the world if it would do any good. You mean ask him to send Joey to Harvard or what? <laughs> I don't know what I mean. But he did so much for Joey before he knew what things were like down here. Maybe, maybe he'd tear, tear down the house or fix it up. Or build a new one, a decent one. Now that he's seen the place. Wake up, honey child. You're dreaming. A couple more fires in this hole would be fit to live in. I wish it had burned to the ground. Sure. So you can move into another one. Just as bad. Got a key? Pa's probably home. He always is. Hey, he found a job yet? You stop working. You have to shake himself. Not Pa. Come on, Mary. Hard day. Usual. Margaret for Joey? Smiley took her in his cab. Oh, I've been keeping an eye out. Read your paper, Pa. Sam, you look out the window. I gotta change my dress. Sure. I see that fella Corplin's a pretty good polo player. Pa, I said I didn't want to talk about him. I don't understand you, Mary, any more than I do Sam. That Mr. Cortland's a mighty fine man. He does your own brother a good turn, and now you don't even want to talk about him. Sure, he's a fine man. Be glad to set your daughter up, and then you won't even have to read the water ads any longer. Sam, if you say another word, I'll... If you hadn't said all those hard things to him at the district attorney's office, well, maybe he might have cut the rent at least. So all you care about the money. I'm only thinking about you, Mary. About how hard you have to work and all. Even if it was free, I'd still hate it. How do you think I like undressing in front of my father? Okay, Roger, you have to stay. Come on, Joe, yeah. Hey, Boy. Joe! Hey, what have you got in your leg? Looks like a pair of stilts to me. Not here, crutches. That's like you get tossed in the mask. Come on, you little hoodlum. Come along, Joey. Come on in the house and lay down. I don't want to. Not yet. You don't want to 
Oh, come on, kid. I want to see the guys. Okay, okay. Wow, what's up? Go, take it easy. Can you walk in? Sure. Yeah, Let me yeah. try. Let me try, oh, Joey. Oh, Joey. Oh, oh, remember what I gave you before you went to the hospital? Please, Joey, ain't I your fella, you dip foot? Oh, baloney. What good at them things? They're only like for cripples. Ah, come on. Who wants to play kick the can? I I Hey, let me play too. How could you play? Well, I can try. Sure, you can play if you want to be it. How is he going to be it on those things? He will never catch nobody. He says he wants to try, don't he? Well, what do you say, Peggy? All right, all right, I'll be it. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, Joey's it. Boy, will we kick that can around. Eye sunken, cyanotic color of the skin, and of the fingernails, and of the mucous membrane. Pulse. Rapid and weak. Respiration. Same. Is it, do you think, doctor? Respiration. Rapid, irregular, hard, feeble. Rapid, irregular, feeble. <coughs> Bring the pair. What's the matter with him, Doctor? What's he got? What they've all got? The whole house, the whole district. Cholera. 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 So you see, Sonny, what squall have you got coming? You're only crippled for life. They're dead, thousands of them. They died the hard way. I'll get you someday. I'll get you. Just wait. Joe, 
Sorry, I've been looking all over for you. It's long past supper time. I don't want no supper. Joey, the doctor says you oughtn't to walk around any more than you have to. I ain't been walking. Joey, Ma's been worried. And you haven't even seen Pa yet. Please come. Okay. Okay. It's late and you got a rest. Come on. I don't care. I ain't going in there. What's the matter, Joey? You scared? Scared there'll be another fire? Who's scared? I ain't chicken. Well, it's just that... Go on. Tell me. I'll understand. I hate it. It stinks. Anyway, I ain't going in there. Not till I have to. I know how you feel, Joey. I hate it, too. And I am scared. I am chicken, I guess. But it's the only place we got to live. People got to have a place to live, good or bad. Why can't we live in a decent place? That's what I want to know. Why can't they fix it up so so people can live in it? They will, Joy. I promise you they will. I don't know how I'll make them, but but I will somehow. Like fun. We'll just wait and see. Yes. Yes, thank you, Mr. Cortland. No, no. This is not Mr. Cortland. I am the butler. No, it's impossible. Absolutely impossible. I... Thank you very much. He says you are? Good. Uh, no. No, don't, don't bother to send a car. I can walk. Yes, really. I, I don't mind at all. Didn't I tell you he would if you let me talk to him? But you cannot walk all the way to the big house. You could ride with me in the station wagon. Uh, if I thought to ask Mr. Cortland. Oh, of course, that's what he meant. He said station wagon, but I thought he had to send it. No, no. Always I drive it. Come. Just try it. I'll well, scream. Really? Where is he? Where is he? Where's Mr. Cortland? I want to see him. That's impossible, Miss. Now, please, Where don't, don't make it step. Never mind. No, the chicken. No. You can't do it. Let's go on it. Of course, I don't mind if the whole house comes down, so long as it doesn't fall this way. Trouble, John. Oh, 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 big pardon, sir. You and Cook been throwing things again? Uh, no, sir. It's that girl, that Mary Rogers. She is, if I may say so, sir, a spit cat. She tries to do this and, and uh, look at it, sir. Oh, well, the meat fixed uh, it yes. here. I agree with you. She's a spit cat, whatever that is. Yes. There you are now. Oh. Life resumes its normal course and everything is just as it was. More or less, sir. <laughs> Now, where is she? What happened? Uh, she's in the library, sir. She rushed in there just as I w just as this happened, sir. Hey, a playful little filly. She you is. Leave her to me. I'll take care of her. Oh. I I just couldn't let you go on paying the hospital bills after what's happened. And I wanted to tell you that I'll pay you back every cent. It, it might take a long time. Now, stop talking and thinking about paying me back. Don't forget what you told me at the DA's office. You were right. I am responsible. The least I can do is try and help the poor kid get well. You shouldn't have taken him out of the hospital. You're not a bit like people say. Hard and cold. I knew you weren't. I wish you could understand what it's like to live like we do. I can stand it better than Joey. I'm older. But for him, it's torture. It's driving him crazy. Why can't you tear down those old rat holes? Or fix them up? Yeah, there's nothing I'd rather do than tear down every one of those fire traps. I haven't had a night's sleep since the fire. Well, that old boy's to blame, though. It's my great-great-great-grandfather. 
He came over here with the original John Jacob Astor and Robert Golan, John Wendell. That was way back before the revolution. New York wasn't much more than a village then, and he figured it was sure to grow. So he bought up all the farmland he could get his hands on. And as the town grew and the prices went up, he and his descendants they held on like old misers. And he looks pretty much like what he was, too. Did you ever see anything colder than those eyes? And those lips, they look like they can bite through a marlin spike. He doesn't look a bit like you. Oh, well, thank heaven. He'd probably say it was mutual, though. Go on and roll over in your grave, you old pirate. The only thing you ever invested was the seat of your pants. You talk as if you really knew him. Knew him? I know them all, and I don't like any one of them. And when I was a, a little boy, my, my father used to bring me down here in this room and, and tell me about him. When I wanted to be a doctor or study engineering, why, they were paraded before me to show me why I couldn't. I was to be like them, you see, a, a banker, a financier, and a landholder, and... Well, Cortland could only play with the right people and do the right things. Build bridges? Good heavens, no. Cut out an appendix? Never. I'd have laughed and done just what I wanted. No, not if you'd been brought up the way I was. But I, uh, I did the next best thing. I used to sneak down here sometimes at night and uh, do that to all of them. <laughs> Must have been fun. Uh, satisfying, yes, but it was a little feeble. I don't see why they're to blame any more than you were. Well, they just sat on the land. They never did a creative thing in their lives. Well, what are you doing? Just sitting, too. Well, do you think that I wouldn't want to get rid of every bit of tenement property that I own? But it costs so much that no one can afford to buy it. Please, think of something. <laughs> You're pretty determined to get those houses built, aren't you? If you had a brother who was crippled for life and scared to live in the place yeah, any I know, longer... Yeah, I know. I know how you feel. I feel the same way. What good is it if you only feel things and don't do anything about it? Yeah. Yeah, that's me, all right. Written on the head of a pin. A feeler, not a doer. But you could be a doer if we could only think of some way. Practical, though. Keep it practical. Remember Mather, he's a businessman. What kind of a businessman is he? You don't understand, my dear. You see, land is sound. You, you can feel it, you can see it, and you, you can even taste it if you're interested. They, they can have uh, income tax laws and strikes and relief, the dole. The relief. And they could do it if they could get the land oh, cheap enough. Couldn't, couldn't you fix a fair price and let, let them pay it off gradually? What, I mean, an installment plan? Sure, why not? Stores do it all the time. Mm, I don't think that'd be quite legal, but... Mortgage. I could give them the land in exchange for bonds, paying me a reasonable return based on a fair price. Then I'd be getting something out of it instead of losing, as I am now. And they'd be getting better houses in the place of slums. And decent people instead of hoodlums. Well, that's true. And think of the money they'd save on prisons. And reform schools. And police. And think of all the sick people who wouldn't be sick. They'd save on hospitals, too. And insane asylums. Will you do it? Will you? Well, you think I'd back out now? It's as much my scheme as yours. Dear me, Peter, how you do carry on. Don't mm. jump in the pool and drown like a darling, will you? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just Peter's sister. I, uh... Oh, don't it... explain. I'm used to women kissing my brother. I can even be induced to do it myself. He's really sweet. Well, I much prefer my cocktails firsthand, thank you. Don't pay any attention to me. Just pretend I'm not here. Oh, this is Mr. Hinchley, Donald Hinchley. The Hinchley. How do you do? Yes, he dropped in for tea in the fall of 27. 26. Don't ever invite him to your house. He'll never leave. Never. You can mm -hmm. count on it. <laughs> I don't think he'd stay where I live very long. No place could be so dreadful as that. One room in a tenement can be a lot worse than you think. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Miss Rogers happens to be one of our tenants. Really? I've never seen one before. An interesting specimen, I hope. You are touchy. You don't like it because I kissed him. Because you think I'm not your kind. Well, I'm glad I'm not. He isn't either. He's kind and generous. And he's going to do a big thing, a fine thing. She'll try and stop you from doing it, but you mustn't let her. You've given me your word. Remember. You ought to be ashamed. You looked at her as if she was something in a glass case. And what's all this about? A big thing, a fine thing that I won't let you do? She's right. You'll probably holler to the stars, but I'm going to do it. Now, who am I? I'm a famous philanthropist, and my last name begins with C. Who am I? I'm all a twister. Well, you needn't be. I'm not going to tell you a thing about it. Not until I've figured an answer for every objection that you and Mavic can invent. Oh, business. Yes, and none of yours at the moment. Tell me. No. Tell me? I said no. Are you in love with that girl? Oh, with, with, with Mary Rogers? She's in love with you. Well, according to you, every girl I meet's in love with me. But in this case, my dear Ethel, you're absolutely crazy. 
Peter Cortland in love with me? <laughs> Sam, you're crazy. All right, he's got a yen for you then. Can't you ever think decent of anybody? I'm not knocking him. It ain't his fault, a guy in his spot with family, dough, everything. Yeah, I know, it's the system. The human system, sure. Well, I don't care what it is, as long as he keeps his promise. He gave me his word. Is that right? You know, some guys promise diamond necklaces. This guy, Cortland, probably figures for you it takes real estate. That all he has to do is make a noise like charity and your social worker heart will melt. No, he means it. Well, maybe. That's just his way. When he finds out he can't get anywhere, well... I... How do you know he can't? <laughs> Don't kid me, baby. Your bourgeois body would burn at the stake for it. All right, Joey, how's the food? Joey, why did you talk to Sam? What's it Ma's been telling Eddie Leary's old woman? That they're going to tear down all the houses in the block? Well, I told her not to tell anybody until everything's settled. It's all a lot of baloney, ain't it? Can you keep a secret? It's true, Joey. It's really true. But you mustn't tell anybody, not yet. No kidding. No kidding. Mr. Cortland's going to give this whole block to the city. And they're going to tear down all these terrible old tenements. Ours, too? Of course ours. First, maybe. And boy. And they're going to build new ones, decent ones. You won't have to play on the streets anymore. And there'll be grass and trees and a regular playground for kids with, with swings and a handball court. You'll even have your own bedroom. And so will I. And I won't have to sleep with you no more. No. no and Ma and Ma will have a real kitchen. And there'll be a regular bathroom with a, with a shower. Oh, apples. Wait and see. I got a date with Mr. Cortland next Monday night for dinner. He'll have the plans then. Come on, it's late. Let's go in. I ain't tired. But, Joey, you haven't been to bed early since you came back from the hospital. Don't you want your leg to get well as quick as it can? Sausage. It ain't ever going to get well. I know that. But what fun is it sitting out here all alone the way you do? It isn't as if you had somebody to talk. I don't talk. I listen. To what? Things. Second Avenue L? I know. And the boat's on the river. When they toot, sometimes I pretend I'm on an ocean liner going to Europe. Do you? Baloney. What's the use of pretending things you can't ever do? That's what's fun. Good night. want to tear you down. <laughs> How do you like that, old stink pot? <laughs> Don't believe that, Sonny. People have been saying that since I can remember. Did you see that man? Know what he's doing? He's moving in. They'll never tear me down. Not as long as there's still people willing to move in. Same man. Sit down a minute, will you? I want to talk to you. Sit down. Looks like I won't be no better off in the next few years than I am now, right? But looks like we'll be living in this dump or one just like it for a long time to come, right? How about us having a kid? No. Well, what's the use of holding out and hoping? Nothing's gonna change. No. Well, I ain't getting any younger, men. We had two, didn't we? It ain't your fault. I guess it ain't nobody's fault they died. Listen to me, Jim. There's nothing wrong with me, and there's nothing wrong with you. You couldn't heave that coal around the way you'd do if there was. What made them kids die, Jim? Because it was just bound to be, men. Bound to be. It was the house we lived in. It's the houses we always live in. It's these walls, these lights, no sun, no air, no decent food, and these stinking drains, that's what it is. And you want me to have another kid and have him die before he's a year old. Or maybe if he's lucky, grow up to be a gangster. Like Peg Leg Lonigan and Two-Gun Crowley and die with a cop slug in his belly. I say no, no. Do you hear me, Jim? No! The least we can do is give these people a little happiness. It seems just common sense to me. Doesn't Arthur obviously know more about it than you do, Peter? Well, oh, perhaps, but, but <laughs> calling it names isn't any answer. What's the matter with the scheme? Everything, my dear boy. Three quarters of your fortune is in real estate. Most of it the kind of property you describe. 
You propose to give land worth $45 million to the city for $50 million worth of bonds, and you ask what's wrong? Why don't you buy a little girlfriend one of those apartments overlooking the river and be done with it? I've seen some lovely ones. She has nothing to do with this. That's the only reasonable thing to do. It's logical. For generations, the Cortlands have worked and planned to build up something permanent. They didn't mean to hand it down to you to throw it away. She's right, Peter. You're really no more than a custodian. It was given to you to preserve. For the benefit of your heirs. And their heirs. That's what makes great families. It isn't as if you'd made the money yourself. You have to accept the burdens as well as the advantages of wealth. You have no more right to destroy the fortune your family created than you would have to gamble or drink it away. You are more than just one man or even the head of a family. You are a representative of a class. So what do you two take me for, a public institution? There weren't any strings on this estate when I got it. Now do that as I see fit. If there's anything left when I'm through, my heirs can have the same privilege. If you'd been down on the east side and seen the way they live in our houses, you'd understand what I'm talking about. A man's first duty is to his family. Do I owe obligations only to dead people and those who haven't been born yet? How about the living? We're responsible to the community in which we live. That's where the money came from in the first place. That's where it'll all go back unless we get some sense. And you. You talk about our children and, and their children. Well, do you want them to have nothing? That's what it'll come to unless people like us realize that the world is changing. Ideas are different. These aren't the old days, the old barroom brawl days when it was every man for himself and hooray for the one who swung the biggest bottle. Very idealistic, my dear boy, but a little radical. Land isn't like other property, Peter. Since the beginning of time, men have valued land above all their other possessions. And I believe in it. I have faith in land. Sell, trade, give away anything else you own, but hold on to your land forever. You talk more like a religious fanatic than a practical businessman. Very well. If you wish, it is a kind of religion. But it's one I have in common with all the leaders of mankind, since the savages. Including the savages. Then I'm a savage, too. You might just as well know it now, Peter. If you insist on going through with this in the face of everything Arthur and I have said, I intend to fight you. <laughs> Swords or pistols? I'm not joking. I'll fight you in every way possible. The old rules, though. You can't scratch and I won't pull your hair. <laughs> I'm warning you. I mean it. If you want to impress your little tenement girlfriend, give her clothes, jewels, an apartment, anything you like. But to jeopardize the whole estate. Don't talk like an idiot. You don't think for a minute that I... I prefer to believe that than that my brother is incompetent, unfit to look after his own best interests or those of his family. I promise you, if you don't drop this whole idea, I'll go into court and demand your removal as executor under father's will. You'd never get away with it. Perhaps not. But at least I'd discredit your whole scheme. Show up your fine philanthropic gesture for what it really is. An irresponsible, undignified, disgusting affair with a cheap little east side parasite. All right. You can look now. Swell scenery. Like it? No. What's the matter with it? Why do you have to have dinner with him? It's just to talk business. Why can't you do it in your regular clothes? Well, from what I hear, Cortland's a regular gentleman. If I don't mind her going out with him, I don't see what call you have to object. Well, I'm not knocking him. Maybe a good thing at that. She'll get this guy straight for once and stop dreaming about grass and trees and playgrounds under the L. Oh, look at that. Hey, some part. Where are you going to have dinner? I have to go. Where? Now, how should I know? He said he'd send the car for me.
bring me here for? Well, the boss said to. But I was going to dinner. Sure, on the boat. Oh. I guess he wanted it to be a surprise. That's entirely too profound an observation on an empty stomach. She needs a drink. Togo. Yes, sir. I wish Sam could see me now. Sam? Oh, so you know, he's not as tough as he seems to be. That's just a blind to hide the good Samaritan underneath. <laughs> It'd break his heart if anyone knew about it, though. Sam doesn't really think you're going to tear any tenements down. What's the matter? something happened? It's just a temporary setback. Won't the city give you a mortgage? Oh, on the contrary, the city went for the idea 100%, but well, it seems that they want to get rid of those slums almost as much as you do. Then what's the setback? Oh, unfortunately, I, I figured without Ethel. Oh, you hit her peg much better than I did. Why did she hit the ceiling? <laughs> I think she'll snap out of it, though, in time. You're, you're not going to do anything. Just because she says you can't. Well, any day now, tomorrow maybe she'll she'll be just as strong for it as she is against it now. You know, it's old Mather who's got her talking like a stuffed owl. No, it isn't. She'll never let you do it. Oh, now, yes, she will. Now, don't be so pessimistic. But you promised. I'm going to do it, Mary. It's just a matter of timing. Look, let's drink to the day when we tear down every crummy old wall, eh? Oh, Mary, Mary, please, now listen. You're still just a little boy who wanted to be a doctor, but didn't. Who wanted to build bridges, but didn't. You haven't changed. You'll never grow up. Mary, you're the only one who's ever believed in me. Don't you understand that I can't fight Ethel now? I can't. She'll drag me into court. She'll have me removed as the executor of the estate. She'll name you. She'll make it look as if I wanted to do the whole thing simply because I'm... Oh, because of you. Do you think I care what she says? But it'll make the entire project look, look cheap and ridiculous. Whatever I can do, whatever the government can do, is merely a drop in the bucket. This thing's got to start off on the right foot. So it's better not to start on any foot at all. Oh, Mary, now look, please try to understand. I understand this much. It's like Sam says. As a landlord, you're a fine polo player. Joey says she was out on a boat last night. How'd he know? All the kids in the block know it. They're you from the pier. Lucky your pa's been out all day looking for a job. What was he wearing? Blinders? Mary, can't you tell your ma what's happened? What's wrong? Everything's wrong, ma. We're gonna have to go on living in this rubbish heap for the rest of our lives. They're not gonna tear down any tenements. 
How do you like that, Joey? All that stuff I told you about parks and trees and playgrounds and grass were all lies. There aren't going to be any. They're not going to build any new places for us. Everything's going to be just the way it always has been. All of us jammed together in one room like monkeys in the zoo. How do you like that, Joey? You and me still sleeping together. Kids on the block making fun of you. Ma doing nothing but chasing dirt and bugs. And pa with his shoes off and the air so thick it chokes you. Well, someday we'll all lay down and die and let the bed bugs and cockroaches Shut come up. up through the cracks and crawl all over us. Can't you see you're driving the kid nuts? Well, he's got to know it sooner or later. He might as well know the way things are. The fool way to talk. The kid's been half crazy ever since he came back from the hospital. I can't help it. I hate it. I hate this place. Sam, take me out of here. Anywhere. I can't stand it anymore. Sure. As soon as I make enough dough to get married. I just can't stand it, Sam. Please. With your old man enlisted for the duration in the army of the unemployed, who'd feed Joey and your ma? Even if they could get along, where would we be? The peanuts you earn in that 14th Street Asylum where you work wouldn't pay anybody to keep my place clean. Any more than I earn enough for you to stay home and do it yourself. Make up your mind, baby. The Constitution says we can pursue happiness. It don't say nothing about catching it. You turn any city in this country upside down like a rock and you find us underneath, the poor like grubs. All of us, white and sick looking, like Joey. <laughs> shut up. You'd better shut up. <laughs> so they were going to tear me down, eh, Sonny? What did I tell you? I was here when your grandfather was a kid, no bigger than you. And I'll still be here after you're dead and gone. And the bed bugs, cockroaches, come on out of the cracks in the floor and crawl all over you. I told you I'd get you. And I will. I will. A friend that lives in that house. Well, if she ain't out of there by now, she never will. I'm a deputy fire chief. They don't need any amateurs to help them out. Keep back and don't make trouble. Get back there. Get back. Still snooping around, huh? Hmm. Where's Mary? If I knew, would I be here? Well, she couldn't. She, she, is, she, she is. She is. Then it's you who did it. Driving that kid brother of hers so crazy he set fire to it. He set fire to the house. Yeah, and if you don't get out of here, I'll do worse. But we've got to find it. We've got to make sure. another fire in one of my tenements. I'm going to tear them all down and build places fit for human beings to live in. Oh, yeah? Of course you don't believe me. I suppose Mary told you everything. Yep. But when you find her, I wish you'd, you'd tell her what I've said. It might help to know that, that her brother hadn't died for nothing. You really mean that? 
Yeah. Is it on the level? Yeah. Yeah, I mean it this time. And if your sister sues you... So she sues me. But I can take it, and I think Mary can, too. What do you mean? Well, my sister has an idea that Mary's in love with me. <laughs> she doesn't know how funny that is. She plans to make it as unpleasant and as undignified as possible. But it seems to me that that shouldn't matter now. Well, that's why you did it. That's why you broke your promise to Mary. Well, get this straight. Give us a decent place to live at a decent price, and Mary and I will be married tomorrow. That's all I've been waiting for for years. Do you still mean to go through with it? That's the chance I'll have to take. You know, you're not the only one who's learned something out of this. Mary ought to know now that your kind of people and hers don't mix, and never will. Not until the world's a whole lot different from what it is now. The world's changing every day. The time may come when men like you will realize that men like me are human beings. Just the way I've begun to suspect that you're one. Good night. Sun's coming up. How about some sleep? You can come to my place. I'll camp downstairs. Try to snap out of it, Mary. About Joey, there's something I want to tell you. If only I hadn't talked to him like that. If only I'd told him different. Cut that. What you said, how you said it didn't make any difference. Why, Joey was aiming to set fire to the house from the time he come back from the hospital. It's my fault. I shouldn't have talked to him like that. He told me he was going to do it. Weeks ago. Only I didn't believe him. Joey told me, sure he did. You're lying. Did you ever know me to lie? Don't think the kid died for nothing either. The fire tonight's waked up your friend Cortland. He's going to tear down every tenement he owns and build new ones like he promised you. It's true, so help me. He's not such a bad guy. He means all right. Wait till he starts. Tearing them down, every one of them. doing something and for the first time in my life. I look at that one go. Oh, you don't know what it's like ripping all these old rat boxes right down to the ground. And building new places is going to be even better. It's true, Joey. It's really true. And there'll be grass and trees and a regular playground for kids with swings and a handball court. You won't have to play in the streets anymore. 